Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. We greet you. I'm your brother Zakwa. I'm your brother Kasafo. And we greet you and we thank you for joining us. If this is your first time, thank you. We praise Ahaya for, for, for leading you onto this video. And may he prosper you and keep you to continue communing with us and learning of the gospel of Yache. Um, and for everyone else, we greet you again. Hello, brother and sisters. And may Ahaya keep you and may he strengthen you in these times. We are doing a lesson today, seeing the times that we're in, the coming tribulation, and it's going to be a very interesting lesson, especially with the things that's going on in the world right now, and of course we want to touch base on that because we haven't as a church, so if you just bear with us and allow Elohim to do his good work. So, Brother Kasafo, you got anything before we get started? Hopefully this is edifying today and we all get some understanding on what we should be doing in these times. Praise the highest. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the adversaries of America are arranging themselves in preparation for war with America, as we have discussed before. So as the prophecies foretold, the nations are preparing. So we're seeing events leading up to the war. And also here in America, America is preparing for war to come as well. And hopefully we get an opportunity here to touch on how they're preparing for it. Zachua, can you read Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 15, please? Sure. Shout against her round about. She has given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her as she has done do unto her. In the preparation for war, where Ahia says she had given her hand, her foundations are fallen, her walls are thrown down. Um, the American economy has thrived, and here we are leading into times where it's going down step by step. And as America breaks down, the nations are going to lift themselves up against her. So we're here living through the process of her being brought down. And when it's brought down to the point where Ahia has appointed it, then that vengeance is going to come upon her. She will be dismayed and attacked. And they are bringing this economy down by taking away the resources from the people to bring them to the point of depression. While those who are wise enough to see what's going on will seek to leave the country to avoid the oppressing sword that's going to come from the necessities and the tribulation to come here in America. Uh, can you read verse 16 of Jeremiah 50, please? Cut off the sower from Babylon, and him that handleth the sickle in the time of harvest. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one to his people, and they shall flee every one to his own land. We see as Ahia speaking of how her walls are falling down in verse 15. Then he tells of how her business will start to fail with the sower and him that handling the sickle being taken away. We know one of America's great resources is manual labor, and here we see through Scripture that her laborers are going to be taken away as her walls are being brought down. And when things are being brought down, there are going to be people who understand and see that oppression coming, and they're going to leave the country, everyone to their own land, trying to escape before that time comes when no one will be able to leave. And Isaiah chapter 13, verse 14, speaks about how people are going to be getting out of here. Can you read that, please? Sure. Zachua? And it shall be as the chaste roe, and as the, the sheep, that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. The people will be in haste to leave that oppressing sword to come, not one to be left behind because whoever is left behind, we're going to see what's going to happen. Can you read Isaiah chapter 13, verse 15, please, and 16? Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. So that's why folks will be in haste to leave before the oppressing sword comes for their life's sake. I'll continue, please. The children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. This is how you see the social chaos that's going to be in America because it's going to be a time of lawlessness. Everyone's going to stand in their own strength. As the uh, book of Second Ezra talks about 
It gives a similar to to how things would be. So pretty much you forsake your covering because y'all is no longer covering you. Yes. Right. Sadly, the people partaking in this oppression at this time in America were not Yache's sheep. Because his sheep would have came out of her so that they wouldn't partake in her plagues. Second Ezra chapter 15 tells about how things would be in these times. I'm start at verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwelleth therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. When swords in their hands, you can see this is races starting to go against one another with swords in their hand. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. This is when the government won't have control of people, for people to consider the law. Every man's law is going to be by what power they have in their own hand. So this is where you're going to have mobs and groups joining together in bands to fight. Right, gangs and, and whatnot. Right. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, cities shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. This is where it's no longer going to just be safety of dwelling in your home. The city part is interesting because they're going to be locking down. You're not going to want to go into a certain area because that gang is overrunning that area. So you're not going to be able to go from city to city freely. Like it's going to be terrible. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So you can see the reason why they're doing it. The resources have been taken and it's troublous times. Hence, there's not going to be pity for another. Everyone is looking out for themselves in this time to come. So that helps understand the times that are being prepared. The process has already started. Notice he said it's for the lack of bread and for the great tribulation. They have used the COVID-19 to already start taking away the people's resources. Well, a lot of people lost their jobs and they've implemented acts and amendments to help keep the people down and to bring about the depression that they're speaking of where people will lack things that they need and this will inspire the oppression to come to try and get it all in context he spoke of the lack of bread they used COVID to take away the jobs to take people's resources and also they uh, complaining that there's a lack of food and we know they control the food output so that's being used on one end. And then you have the riots and the, the racial issues that are being promoted. That's going to help bring about the sedition among men, as Second Ezra spoke of, where people are going to fight one against another. So I see both these events are working to bring about the oppression that Ahaya spake of. Uh, even on that note, they said that there's a shortage of tractor trailer semi drivers. And, you know, me and Casa were in that industry. and we know that there's not a shortage and the pay rates have decreased. So everything is a part of an agenda. So the way that they're playing and laying everything out for the public is not so as according to what's actually going on. They're making it this way, right? Putting the rates down, they're forcing people out of the business. Right. So things are in motion and there will come a time when Ahaya wants us to leave this place. Can you read? Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 8 and 9, please. Remove out of the midst of Babylon, and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans, and be as the he goats before the flocks. Now, looking at what Ahia said here, so you can understand that this is literally referring to leaving North America, to be specific. It says, go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans. It's not just saying spiritually come out of Babylon and her ways. It's right. literally, you have to remove out of the mist. You have to get out of Babylon. So we actually have to leave the place. And now he's telling you why it's important to leave. Continue, please, in verse 9. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. It's war coming. He's raising up the enemies to come. Continue, please. 
and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. The arrow shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. So the war to come is the reason and sign to look for, to know when it's time to go. And Ahia desires us to leave because he doesn't want us to partake in these plagues. Zakwa, can you jump? You see Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 45 to 47. Can you read that, please? Sure. My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. So the oppressing sword and the war to come will be the fierce anger of the Lord coming upon Babylon. And he wants us to deliver our souls by leaving here so we don't partake in these plagues being kept under the covering of Yahshua our Lord. So as things start to change, we know through scripture the sign to know when it's actually time to leave is the oppressing sword and the war to come. And in leaving the land, you're actually delivering your own soul. So the concept of staying here and being delivered is not true. Okay. Continue, please, to see Ahaya. He actually cares. He, he doesn't want us to partake in anguish that's to come here. And we're talking about when the tribulation comes. Like, when it was time to leave and you chose to stay and you were locked in the country, this is what we're referring to. Yes. And least your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Notice, he said, least your heart faint for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. The rumors are already here. Right. He said, a rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor. But notice, the first year there was just a rumor, and that next year there was a rumor and violence in the land ruler against ruler so you see it's going to increase as rumors become a reality over time things are moving forward so we are drawing near that time and ahaya does not want our hearts to faint continue please Zachary. therefore behold the days come that i will do judgment upon the graven images of babylon and her whole land shall be confounded and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her and I has given us mercy to let us know that we do have to leave this place because the whole land will be confounded. There's no one that will be here in that time when the tribulation comes here that would be sound and in the faith and prospering. The whole land will be confounded and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. According to scripture, only the two witnesses in Revelations chapter 11 would be the ones that would die here and be resurrected and caught up to heaven otherwise there's no scripture that shows anyone else remaining in america for the duration of the tribulation would be saved because before the tribulation of america is complete america is going to be hit with nuclear fire in revelation chapter 17 about verse 16 to 18 it tell how the 10 horns are going to shoot at the horn and burn her with fire so do you understand there is no salvation in this land and knowing that, we've seen that Ahaya calls his people to come out. So it will be Jews and Gentiles that will come out of her and save their own soul. And many of the Israelites are prophesied to come out, and they're going to come out seeking their Allahayim. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 4 and 5, please. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping they shall go and seek the lord the elohim they shall ask the way to zion and their faces to the word saying come and let us join ourselves to the lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten remember the scripture said that every man shall flee to his own people in his own land we didn't know who we were we had no home therefore we're trying to find a way to Zion. That's letting you know that we wouldn't go directly to Israel. It says they shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward. Showing we'll be trying to find our way back to holy Jerusalem, which is above. And joining ourselves in the covenant with him. So you can see the repentance 
that will be brought forth in the times to come for the children of Israel. Now we're going into understanding with all that's coming, what do we need to do to be delivered? What should we be focused on seeing as though all this stuff is prophesied to happen and all we're seeing what's going on in the world? Let's look at what Yache said when he seen or heard of people being killed by the rulers of the world. Uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 1 to 5, please. There were present at that feast and some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. We can tie that into today where the man just recently got killed by a police officer and people are being killed for different reasons and in different areas around America and in the world probably that we have not seen on the news. And here, Yache's response to these things. And Yache answered and saith unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay. But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Yache understood that these events happening where we're seeing people getting killed and things of that nature, it's actually a sign to let us know that we need to repent. Right. Because it's our highest mercy that we're still here and we weren't the ones that actually got killed in whatever event happened. And he goes on to say, Of those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, Thank ye that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem. Notice, even in Yahweh's time, there were multiple events of the Israelites being killed. Just like here in these times, we have these different situations where people are being killed. It was happening in his days, and he's telling us what his response is to these things. Continue, please. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. There we see our reaction to these things should be towards repentance, not frustration or anger or bitterness toward what's happening, but understanding that it's a calling for us to repent. Because though these events are going on around us, our focus needs to be on ourselves and growing in the faith so that we may escape the tribulation to come. Hermas was shown a, a vision concerning what's coming here in these end times so that we could understand how we are to overcome what's coming. Uh, Shepherd of Hermas, vision four, please. Chapter one, verse one. The fourth vision which I saw, brethren, 20 days after the former vision which came unto me. For a type of the impending tribulation. I was going into a country by the companion way. From the high road, it is about 10 stades. And the place is easy for traveling. While then I am walking alone, I entreat the higher that he will accomplish the revelations and the visions which he showed me through his holy church, that he may strengthen me and may give repentance to his servants which have stumbled, that his great and glorious name may be glorified, for that he held me worthy that he should show me his marvels. Listen, says she, the black is this world in which you dwell. And the fire and the blood color show us that this world must perish by blood and fire. And the golden part are ye that has escaped from this world. For as the gold is tested by the fire and is made useful, so ye also that dwell in it are being tested in yourselves. I didn't hear what she said. She said the fire and blood color show that this world must perish by blood and fire. Here we have, there's going to be much bloodshed and much fire with the nuclear warfare and whatnot that's coming here in these end times. And the golden part are the people that escape. Ah, I will and we be a part of this gold. And that gold that's being tested by the fire so that it may be made useful is us being tested within ourselves so we can understand What's going on outwardly, the COVID, the riots, the race issues, these are all outward signs, yet they're also distractions from the greater battle within. Right. It's a time to focus on ourselves and making sure that we are not reprobate, that we are found worthy unto the calling. 
So hopefully this really helps understand. This is the church speaking to Hermas, so you can know that she is telling us where our battle really lies. And she goes on to say, Brother Zachwa, please. Ye then that abide and pass through the fire will be purified by it. For as the gold loses its dross, so ye also shall cast away all sorrow and tribulation, and shall be purified, and shall be useful for the building of the tower. And there we see also, cast away all sorrow and tribulation. Let not the things that are happening grieve us, but rather rejoice in that we have this opportunity to get it right. We're still here. Right. And now we have understanding of what the battle actually is. We're not blinded to think that, you know, we're supposed to be paying attention to what everyone else is doing. But we're given understanding by the church to know, let me look within me. Let me ensure that the fruits are abiding in me and that no evil is dwelling in my house so that I may be purified by this tribulation. All right. And this is where Paul also speaks in Romans 5 that we have joy in tribulation because tribulation bringeth experience and experience bringeth hope and hope make it not the shame. All right. I probably butchered that a little bit. It's a war within us that we must overcome. And self-examination is what the church is telling us of. And Paul also speaks of what we must do so that we may not be taken out from the calling of Christ. Yeah, say. Can you read 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, please? Sure. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahshua Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate? This is key for us. Examine ourselves. Am I keeping the fruits of the Spirit? Am I walking in charity towards another person? Am I seeking peace with all? Uh, we actually have to prove ourselves. This is why we have to study and show ourselves approved unto Allah. This is what it truly means. That we may be perfect. It's, it's self-examination. Because we have to know that Christ is in us, except we be reprobate. Reprobate is, it means to be unable to withstand the test. Right. A reprobate person is one that they may be going along, but in time, they're going to fall away. Because this is a journey to attain unto Christ. Yachay. It's a cross that we have to bear, as he spoke of. We have to die daily, as Paul attested to. It's not a, a one day, I've made it. And that's it. That's that. It's constant. Because you're always going to be shown something that you can grow in. We're always going to be purged more. Because Yache said it himself. Every branch that brings forth fruit, he purgeth it so that it may bring forth more fruit. So it's continual. We have to withstand this test and stay cheerful with joy, knowing that he's going to continue to show us what we're doing wrong and be glad because we know why he's doing it. It's for our salvation so that we may partake in the Father's holiness. That's the loving Father chasing in us. So we have to be mindful. This is what we have to focus on in these times. Self-examination is a mental process to overcome the evil thoughts that lead to bad works by examining everything according to the fruits. Second Corinthians chapter 10, please, verse 3 and 4, to help us understand how we war to overcome this battle within us. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Elohim to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Elohim, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Notice, it's all mental. It's all inward. He's casting down imaginations. This is where the random thoughts that come, the random desires, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of al -Hayim. This is why we're studying the law. This is why we're studying the fruits of the Spirit so that we may know what is the knowledge of al -Hayim and be able to guard ourselves when the thoughts and imaginations come that speak against it. And by being on guard and not in agreement with the evil thoughts, it's brought into subjection to the obedience of Christ. 
This is where we serve Christ with our mind and become new creatures and live in sacrifices unto him. We must be attentive to what is in our hearts to overcome the war that is within us. We're going to touch in the apocalypse of Moses to understand that there is a warfare that has been placed within us by the adversary from the beginning when Adam fell. Apocalypse of Moses chapter 28. Please. Back on. But a higher turned to Adam and said, I will not suffer thee henceforward to be in paradise. And Adam answered and said, Grant me, O Ahia, of the tree of life, that I may eat of it, before I be cast out. Then Ahia spake to Adam, Thou shalt not take of it now. For I have commanded the cherubim with the flaming sword that turneth every way to guard it from thee, that thou take not of it. But thou hast the war which the adversary hath put into thee. Yet, when thou art gone out of paradise, if thou shouldest keep thyself from all evil, as one about to die, when again the resurrection hath come to pass, I will raise thee up, and then there shall be given to thee the tree of life. See, the adversary put a war into us, and we have the same opportunity as Adam that if we keep ourselves from all evil as one about to die, when the resurrection hath come to pass, he will raise us up. Paul spoke of this in Acts, I think, 26, talking about the hope of the resurrection. This is the same hope that we have if we overcome this war within. And Ezra also spoke of this war that's in us that we must overcome. Uh, 2 Ezra chapter 3, verse 21 and 22, please. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed, and was overcome, and so be all they that are born of him. That's why we all have this war within us. We've all been overcome. Continue, please. Thus infirmity was made permanent. And the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root. So that the good departed away and the evil abode still. Notice the infirmity was made permanent. Whatever that was that the adversary put into us, it was an infirmity. It was not good or unclean. All right. Through that infirmity, the good departed away. So the law was the good that departed out of our hearts. And the evil abode still. This is why Jeremiah 17, the Ahia said, The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And now we know it's because of that wicked root that abode still. And this also helps us understand the gospel. Why Christ Yashe had to come to purge our hearts and replant the good back in us by writing the commandments on the fleshly tables of our hearts through the Spirit. Let's see what it is that the devil poured into us. What is this war that he's placed in us? Our mother, Eve, she tells of what it was that he put into us that has us in this warfare. Apocalypse of Moses, chapter 19, please, Brother Zachwa. And I opened to him, and he walked a little way. Then turned and said to me, I have changed my mind and will not give thee to eat until thou swear to me to give also to thy husband. And I said, What sort of oath shall I swear to thee? Yet what I know, I say to thee, by the throne of the master, and by the cherubim, and the tree of life, I will give also to my husband to eat. And when he had received the oath from me, he went and poured upon the fruit the poison of his wickedness, which is lust, and the root in the beginning of every sin. That's the infirmity that caused the goodness of the law to depart away from our hearts. This is what we're fighting against, brothers and sisters. Lust, the root of his wickedness. In the beginning of every sin, now our call is to separate ourselves unto our shepherd, or to cleave unto the knowledge of Allah Hayyam, which will help us be delivered from the desires that the devil placed in us, bringing us back into the obedience of Christ, our master. This is the process that we have to go through within ourselves. We must cleanse our temple. Our heart is the battlefield. Hopefully you better understand our hearts and our mind is where the battle really is. Right. This tribulation is within us. We must cleanse our temple. Lust has invited idols and demons into our hearts working on righteousness against us. Let's look at Barnabas chapter 16 verse 
7 through 10 and verse, chapter 17, verse 1, please. Uh, Barnabas chapter 16, verse 7. I find them that there is a temple. How then shall it be built in the name of Ahiah? Understand ye, before we believed on Elohim, the abode of our hearts was corrupt and weak. A temple Indeed. truly. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. My bad. A temple Indeed truly is built corrupt by and hands. Weak. Okay, I'm reading that and I'm done. Okay. <laughs> a temple truly built by hands. Okay. I figured oh, it went. I, I, can't, figured I it, can't see you. I figured it went together, so I figured you wanted. Okay. Right. Oh, my bad. My bad. I'm a, I, I want to blame it on I can't see you, but my time is off anyway. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. <sighs> so a boat of our heart was corrupt and weak. We now understand that it's through lust. That's how it's been corrupted. It's become weak through the malignity of that root. This was the temple built by hands. This is the carnal flesh. All right. Continue, please, brother. For it was full of idolatry and was a house of demons. Because we did whatsoever was contrary to Elohim. So we see how not going according to the law lets us know what's in our heart. When we do whatever's contrary to the will of Elohim, there's still a need for more purging of the abode of our hearts. Yet Elohim is gracious that he's building his true temple in his name. Because Elohim is a spirit and seeketh such that worship him in spirit and in truth. Therefore, this spiritual temple is being built by the process we are being brought through now. And Barnabas gives us understanding on it. If we continue, please. But it shall be built in the name of Ahiah. Give heed then that the temple of Ahiah may be built gloriously. How? Understand ye, by receiving the remission of our sins and hoping on the name, we became new. Created afresh from the beginning. Wherefore, Elohim dwelleth truly in our habitation within us. This is the first step. Repentance. Believing on the name Yache. This gave us opportunity to become anew. Created afresh. We get a fresh start being forgiven of our former sins. And then, what Yache starts to work in us. Continue, please, brother. How? The word of his faith the calling of his promise, the wisdom of the ordinances, the commandments of the teaching, he himself prophesying in us, he himself dwelling in us, opening for us who have been in bondage unto death the door of the temple, which is the mouth, and giving us repentance lead of us to the incorruptible temple. See, it's him bringing us forward. It's him giving us his word to increase our faith and the more we understand the calling of the true promise it guides us into the wisdom of the ordinances seeing how this is truly our wisdom in the sight of the nation and we are held in this righteousness through the commandments of his teaching because through thy precepts we get understanding as david attested in the psalms yache working in us and bringing us forward and he's continually pushing us from the bondage of death to work the salvation that is in him. And notice the door of the temple is the mouth, given repentance that leadeth us to the incorruptible temple. Speaking, confessing our faults, giving praise unto Allah, I am. these things are Yache working in us to deliver us from the bondage of death. You can see how great repentance actually is. To confess a fault and forsake it is bringing us into the holy temple of Allah. I am. And knowing that is Yache in us when we actually confess our faults. It helps us know when we are truly walking in the ways of our Lord. Continue, please, brother. But he that desires to be saved looketh not to the man, but to him that dwelleth and speaketh in him. Right. Being amazed at this, that he has never at any time heard these words from the mouth of the speaker, nor himself ever desired to hear them. This is the spiritual temple built up to a higher. This is a process. When we start to look within ourselves and realize it's Yache speaking in us, when we hand those words of righteousness, 
yeah, I'd say bring us along. It's all inward. And this is our this is our joy. And this is the amazement that we see it. When we focus in, we start to understand the voices that are speaking and differentiate right from wrong. We rejoice knowing who it is that's doing it and speaking in us. Uh, continue to chapter 17, please. Okay, so far as it was possible, with all simplicity, to declare it unto you, my soul hopeth that I have not omitted anything of the matters pertaining unto salvation, and so failed in my desire. Ah, it was gracious unto Barnabas. They didn't omit anything indeed. We have understand it now. To know that love would bring us unto the salvation in Christ Yahweh. And Paul tells of this in Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 11, please. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the same, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now we understand when we keep the commandments, we just love people. We just love one another. Where we will not vex a stranger, this is love. Where we will not bear a grudge against thy brother, nor suffer sin upon thy brother, this is love. Continue, please. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This is our calling. Continue, please. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when, when we believed. Here we are. This is the time. It is high time to awake out of sleep. All right. Because the salvation is nearer. We are up here at the end of the world. Work good works while yet there is time. This process of cleansing the temple of our hearts takes work. And thankfully, Ahio was gracious in the Psalms of Solomon to give understanding of how this cleansing goes. Uh, can you read chapter 3 of Psalms of Solomon, please? Why sleepest thou, O my soul? And blesseth not Ahio. Sing a new song unto Elohim, who is worthy to be praised, sing and be wakeful against his awakening. For good is a psalm sung to Elohim from a glad heart. The righteous remember Ahiah at all times, with thanksgiving and declaration of the righteousness of Ahiah's judgment. The righteous despises not the chastening of Ahiah. His will is always before Ahiah, the righteous stumbleth and holdeth Ahiah righteous. He falleth and looketh out for what Elohim would do to him. He seeketh out whence his deliverance will come. The steadfastness of the righteous is from Elohim, the deliverer. Their lodge is not in the house of the righteous, sin upon sin. The righteous continually searcheth his house to remove utterly all iniquity done by him in error. He maketh atonement for sins of ignorance by fasting and afflicting his soul, and a higher count of guiltless every pious man and his house. The sinner stumbleth and curseth his life. The day when he was begotten and his mother's travail, he added sin to sin. While he liveth, he falleth, and very grievous is his fall, and riseth no more. The destruction of the sinner is forever, and he shall not be remembered when the righteous is visited. This is the portion of the sinner forever, but they that fear Ahia shall rise to life eternal, and their life shall be in the light of Ahia, and shall come to an end no more. There you see from Solomon how you can see the differentiation of how the righteous go through the trials and tribulations of the growth of the gospel as opposed to how the sinners would go about it. The reprobate mind will start to curse their life, go into complete sorrow when they're fallen, instead of praising Ahaya and giving thanks and counting him righteous for when he shows a fall. Hopefully that helps differentiate. Uh, there was something interesting. Right at the beginning of the psalm, Solomon said, Why sleepest thou, O my soul? Like, being asleep 
is falling away. Because remember, you actually say, um, you know, stay awake, you know, for you know not time or hour your master cometh. So he's saying, wake up, awake, give praise unto I am, stay in joy, stay thankful. That keeps us awake and in the fight and in the walk. And then he went on to explain the righteous. And now here, looking at Ephesians, let's also get more on admonition on waking up in these times. Because these are the troubles here coming. Uh, the night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore we have to wake up. And that's what we're looking here in Ephesians for encouragement from the apostles and prophets. Ephesians 5, verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Christ in us. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. And that's a woken person, being circumspect, taking heed to oneself that the fruits are being bared and the commandments are being kept. Continue, please. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And this is why it's such an important time to learn the doctrine, right. to study the commandments. And learn the fruits of the spirit because knowing that it's an evil time we have to be sure we're not giving over to any works of darkness All right romans chapter 13 verse 12 to 14. all right continue please the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. It's very interesting what Paul said. We have our calling. Right. We are not to go back to these things. Now that also lets you know what the world is going to turn onto as the tribulations ensue. Right. Can you go back a bit and read that, Zachary, please? Romans 13 and 13. Right. Let us walk honestly right. as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness. So the world will turn on to riotous parties and intoxication. Not in chambering and wantonness. Chambering is carnal cohabitation. So the world will turn on to intercourse and wantonness, which is unbridled lust and excess. All right, continue, please. Not in strife and envying. As Christ said, the love of many shall wax cold, so you'll see an increase in strife and quarreling and envying between people as the world goes further into darkness in these times. And that's increasing here as well. You'll find people, they'll be more argumentative. People are more short-tempered. And then also you'll find among the religions, there's more debate, there's more strife increasing. Because the iniquity is abounding as the times draw near. Continue, please. But well, put on the Lord Yahweh Christ, and may not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. As we draw near to the end, we're going to see these lusts of the flesh lifting up and being more prominent in society. Christ even said, Take heed to ourselves, lest we be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life. Because as things get worse, people are going to turn to partying, sleeping with one another, and drunkenness also. To understand what putting on our Lord Yache is, we have the scriptures to understand. It's the fruits of the Spirit that's going to keep us from the provisions of the flesh. What else do you have there, Brother Zachary? Uh, Shepherd of Hermit, Vision 4, chapter 3, verse 5 through All right. 6. From Hermas, we had read how, understand that we are being tried within ourselves. And after we go through this trial, Hermas was also shown what's to come after that. If I had to be gracious unto us, that we may be a part of what comes after the tribulation. Okay, go ahead, please. Uh, the Shepherd of Hermas, Vision 4, chapter 3, verse 5. But the white portion is the coming age, in which the elect of Elohim shall dwell, because the elect of Elohim shall be without spot and pure unto life eternal. And this is what we're looking forward to, to partake in Yahweh's kingdom. Continue, please. Wherefore, cease not thou to speak in the ears of the saints, 
ye have now the symbolism also of the tribulation which is coming in power. But if ye be willing, it shall be naught. Remember ye the things that are written beforehand. If ye be willing, it shall be not. So those words are very powerful because it won't be hard if we're willing. Right. If we're acquiescent, if we consent unto this process that's going to happen within us, it's not going to be hard. So may that help us understand how this journey can become a lot easier by just being willing, partaking in the process with thanksgiving. Continue, please. Second Edgers chapter 16, verse 74 to 78. And this is where we have our highest promise. So his word to keep us in these times to know what it takes for us to be delivered from all that is to come. Go ahead, please. Second Edgers chapter 16, verse 74. Hear, O my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Allah I am is your guide. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord Allah I am, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. This is why we have to be so on guard within. He said, don't be afraid, nor doubt. Perfect love doesn't have fear. We have to guard ourselves against doubt, because doubt is the daughter of the devil, according to the shepherd of Hermas. Let us not doubt that Ahaya will do what he said he will do, and that if we are willing, he will keep us through all the trials. I mean, we don't let our sin weigh us down. That's where guilt, don't let guilt of what we did formerly weigh us down and in sorrow. When we repent, let's move forward. Right. And trust that Ahaya be gracious. And also, don't let our iniquities lift themselves up. This is where you have to be on guard against the imaginations and the thoughts to bring it into obedience unto Christ throughout this whole process. This is the journey that we're on. And I have said he'll deliver us. So hopefully this is helpful in the times to come. These two things actually go together. It says, let not your sins weigh you down, because usually when you fall or whatever the case is, you go into like almost like a state of depression. Like you can't get it right. Like... It doesn't matter anymore. I can't get it right. I can't do it. And then what happens from there is you get given over to your sin. Whatever sin it is, it lifts itself up. And you're like, I'm just going to do it anyway because I just can't get it right. So these two things are actually hand in hand. And the sorrow leads you unto a greater sin because you know better. And then you go into a presumptuous sin. And that's what he's actually trying to stop us from doing. Right. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. See? And covered with their iniquities, like as a field, just covered over with bushes. And the path thereof covered with thorns that no man may travel through. Being bound by iniquity like this is where we lose faith that we can overcome them or we doubt that we can overcome them or we make excuses to stay in them or we grow weary in the fight because we didn't overcome it as soon as we would have liked and we just stay in it thinking it's too hard or we get to the place where we accept them as they are and continue on and when we're bound like this, because of our choices, not being willing, the scriptures tell what will happen to that, that person as you continue reading. It is left undressed, and it's cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. This is where people are left to go whatever direction they're going, and in the end, they'll end up in the fire. So... We have the dichotomy and understanding of the two choices we have, the life or death, being willing and acquiescing to his will or being sorrowful and, and unbelieving that we can be delivered and continuing in our own ways. Is there anything else there? Uh, that's it. I'm just um, going to check with the chat. Uh, 
Shout out to Talon, brother Johnny Mendez. Shout out to Talon, brother Hanu. Shout out to Talon, brother Michael. Sister Diana. Shout out to Talon. Uh, Michael, I'm, I want to make sure that uh, we got two Michaels. Uh, Michael, uh, if I mess your last name up, I am sorry. Uh, Gutierrez. Gutierrez, yeah. I can't even see it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> so praise the higher man. We we definitely enjoy to have you guys on. Um, we hope the lessons are fun. Uh, if you got any questions, please send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail dot com. We try to put these lessons together to cover all bases for, for all people's questions. But there's always questions that people have that we don't cover. So. Definitely please send us an email at HebrewReaders at gmail.com. Well, brothers and sisters, we hope everything was well. Um, praise Ahaya for his work and uh, the work that he's placing in you all as well, um, being the body of Messiah Yache, and we glorify him. May you enjoy your Shabbat day. Ahaya be praised, and may Ahaya keep you all. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom.